Romans chapter 3, and uh, my eyes are a little blurry this morning, so pray for me. Verse 21, Romans chapter 3 and verse number 21, the Bible says here, But now the righteousness of God without the law is manifested, being witnessed by the law and the prophets, even the righteousness of God which is by faith of Jesus Christ, unto all and upon all them that believe, for there is no difference. For all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. That includes everybody. Amen. Being justified freely by His grace through the redemption that is in Christ Jesus, whom God has set forth to be a propitiation through faith in His blood to declare His righteousness for the remission of sins that are passed through the forbearance of God to declare, I say at this time, His righteousness that He might be just and the justifier of him which believeth in Jesus. Where is boasting then? It is excluded. By what law? Works? Nay, by, but by the law of faith. Therefore we conclude that a man is justified by faith without the deeds of the law. Heavenly Father, I pray you'll take the reading of your word this morning. Lord, bless it. And Father, allow us as your people to fellowship in and around your precious word this morning. And I pray, Lord, that somebody, Lord, here this morning might hear. And Father, for the first time, realize they're lost. They're on the road to hell. And Father, may come, Father, and bow in an old-fashioned altar and surrender and come before you, Lord. And I know if they come, Lord, you will save them. Now, Father, I pray, Lord, just give us unction this morning. Lord, give us that special touch. Give us preaching power for just a little while. And Father, we'll praise you, give you honor and glory. Lord, for we ask it in the precious and lovely name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen and amen. amen. Now, we might think, you know, that people were saved by the grace of God, and yet somebody asked me, why is there so much confusion? Why is uh, Christians, you know, they argue over time and over different things. And I tell them, amen, it's not a heart problem, it's a head problem. Amen, got new hearts but an old head. Amen. And I say this this morning that uh, 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 a, lot, a lot of things go on in the house of God that shouldn't go on. But listen, it's, if you're saved by the grace of God, just let the Spirit of God lead you. That's, I, I, that's uh, one thing I'd say. But I want us to look at justification just for uh, uh, just a few minutes. Now, I don't have much strength this morning. If I get weak need and my back gets to bother me, you know, amen, I'll just sit down. But you pray for us this morning. But I want you to know it's justification now is not, is not regeneration. It is not a state, but our standing with God. And uh, uh, justification is not adoption. I know that we got a spirit that cries out, Abba, Father, and we've been adopted, amen, into the family of God. And salvation is not sanctification, amen. Now, sanctification is where the Holy Spirit works on us, and we begin, do you know, to put off things that would be a hindrance, amen, that we can be used by Almighty God. Amen. The sanctification is that we're, we're set apart to do a job for the Lord Jesus Christ. And for to do a job, sometimes we have to sacrifice some things and do away with some things that would hinder us in that ministry. So uh, uh, justification is not sanctification. Amen. Justification is to prove or show to be just or to be pronounced free from guilt and blame. Amen. I believe to be declared uh, righteous. Amen. And I've got Titus chapter 3 and verse number 7 right there for some reason and I don't know what it is. Praise God. But you pray for us and we'll find it. Amen. Titus Chapter 3 and verse number 7. And I thought I had it even marked. But amen. Praise God. Hold on just a minute. We'll find it. Somebody's found it. Read it. 7. 
7, that being justified by his grace, we should be made heirs according to hope of eternal life. Amen. Amen. Thank God justification is to prove to be just. That's where God declares us righteous. Now, uh, uh, when you get saved by the grace of God, amen, you repent of your sins and the blood of Jesus Christ washes you from your sins. God wraps that spiritual gavel and declares you righteous. And that is to say that God looks at us today as though we have never sinned. What a blessing. What a blessing, amen. Now, I want us to look at three things right quick, and then uh, we're done, if I can get through them. First of all, grace is the source of justification. Now, grace is the work of God where he does the unexpected for the undeserving. He provides the unattainable to the, uh, the ones that cannot obtain. Now, listen, the, the, uh, the, the results... What are they? They are unexplainable, undeniable, and the benefits are unchanging, unpayable, and unending. Thank God for the grace of Almighty God. I didn't deserve it. Amen. If I did have justice, I'd be in hell this morning. And so would you. Thank God for the good grace of God. And that's the source of justification. Amen. Peter called him the God of all grace. In 1 Peter chapter 5 and verse number 10, behind the scene of justification, you'll see the grace of Almighty God working. Hallelujah. Listen, we've all sinned. Amen. Paul said we're all under sin, both Jew and Gentile. Amen. And all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. Boy, I remember reading where there's an old Pharisee and there's no publican. That old Pharisee, yeah, I tithe every week. You know, I pray every day. I do this, I do that. Hey, Amen. And uh, listen, the old publican wouldn't as much as lift his head and look up toward heaven, but bowed his head, showed his breast, and said, oh God, be merciful unto me a sinner. Jesus said that man left justified. Amen. He acknowledged his sin. Amen. I'm glad for the grace of God. Amen. That uh, even though we sin, praise God, we have a great high priest. Amen. Thank God. Now, now, uh, Brother Jason has stepped all over this message this morning in the Sunday school hour. Since we're helplessly and hopelessly lost in sin, the only way a perfect and a holy God can declare us righteous is for someone to take our place. I'm glad there's one. They searched through heaven. They searched through earth. They searched under the earth. No one was found worthy. Hey, man, you know, John looked. He wept because nobody was able to open the book. But when, hey, one of the elders said, hey, John, come here. Weep not, for the line of the tribe of Judah has prevailed to open the book. But when John turned, he saw a lamb. He saw a lamb had been slaughtered. Amen. It's the lamb of God. Amen. Uh, That has paid the price for your sin and my sin. Price tag on sin. Amen. Uh, The price tag on sin. Amen. Is death for the wages of sin is death. But the gift of God is eternal life through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Aren't you glad for the grace of Almighty God, which moved me to price that he paid the price? What is that price? Blood. Blood is the price of justification. Now listen to me. I don't care what some others say. Even if taking blood out of some of the hymnals, Preachers are not preaching on it anymore. 
Some people say, I'll not have that slaughterhouse religion. But you listen to me. Without the shedding of blood, there is no remission of sin. There's no forgiveness. We're still in our sin. And we're still on our road to hell. Now listen to me. Salvation is free to you and me. Amen. It's free, but very expensive to God. God gave his only son, his only begotten son. You know, when I went to buy a vehicle, there was a price tag on that vehicle. You go and view and you look at a house that you're going to buy. You look at the price that's on that house. But listen, what is the price for sin? We was all doomed. We was all going to hell. The Bible says the wages of sin is death. There's a price tag, and that price is death. <laughs> but I'm glad, praise God, that the blood of Jesus Christ, amen, God sending his only begotten son into the world, amen, to save all sinners. Amen, blood is the price. Are you washed in the blood? Have you been washed in the blood? Thank God I've been washed in the blood. Amen. That, that, the Bible says in Ezekiel chapter 18 several times in that chapter, he says, the soul that sinneth shall surely die. Right. Amen. <laughs> All the time I was running from God. All the time I was rebelling against God, God's hand of mercy stood between me and hell. And so, and so has he done for you. We ought to thank God this morning for his mercy and his grace. Amen. Amen. The blood that was shed that has redeemed us and justified us in the sight of God. Amen. 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 That mercy intervened. <laughs> I'm glad that Sunday morning at Old Mount Calvary Baptist Church boy the Holy Ghost rung my number and said boy you're going to hell from behind the pulpit there I waved the white flag of surrender I gave up I agreed with God about my sin I repented of my sin and amen I just cast that on him and I received him as Lord and Savior at that very moment of time God declared me righteous he declared me justified in the eyes of God not my own righteousness it's his righteousness amen this morning Jesus died for the human race that we wouldn't eternally die in the lake of fire. Blood is the price. When you look at the blood, you've got to look. You've got to look there in the garden of Gethsemane when he agreed with the Father. He said, Father, if it be thy will, let this cup pass from me. Nevertheless, not my will, but thine, Father. There he agreed to take the sin of the world in his body and nail it to the cross. I don't know about you, but you take all the sin from Adam, amen, up to that point. You take all the future sin that a person will ever sin, amen, they come whirling to the cross. No wonder it took the Son of God. Nobody could have took that. Amen. He took your sins and my sins and nailed them to the cross. There in the garden that he prayed so earnestly that his sweat became his great drops of blood. They arrested him. Amen. Had a mock trial. Amen. Had a mock trial. Amen. The soldiers beat him and smote him 
Hey man, they buffeted. If you ever take that word buffet and look it up, hey man, they took their fist and they actually slugged the Lord Jesus with all that they had back and forth into a circle. They kicked him. They hit him. Amen. His head swollen. His eyes being swollen near shut. Amen. As the psalmist said, that my eyes fail me. I'm saying he took the punishment. He suffered the pure wrath of God in my place. And I say hallelujah right there. Amen. Amen. That he done that. They took him and beat him with a cat of nine tails. Boy, look up that. Study that. I know Mel Gibson tried to do the best he could with it, but it was nothing like it really was. Hey, man. Body mutilated. Hey, man. His ribs exposed. Hey, man. Flesh hanging. Hey, man. Cut into the muscle part. Blood spurting. Hey, man. And his prayer is, hey man, Lord, get me to Calvary. I've got to lay down my life. There at Calvary, beat beyond recognition. Let me say this. They took him and nailed him in an old wooden cross. There hung between heaven and earth. And through all that he went through, through all that he suffered, not only physically, but mentally, they're hanging on the cross looking down. He says, Father, forgive them. They know not what they do. Amen. And I believe he was saying, in effect, Father, withhold your wrath now until these oops can know what, was, what happened today. He prayed in their behalf. He prayed on our behalf. Amen. Thank God that he shed his precious blood. Boy, it oozed down off the cross. There in the garden, drops of blood. Hey, man, there, there at the old uh, 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 column where they, uh, they, they whipped him in the blood. You know, just, just came running down his body. But thank God. Thank God. Hey, man, on that third day. Listen, they took, took him down from the cross. They put him in a barred tomb. And they sealed it. Big old stone, they sealed it. They put a Roman guard watch over it. <laughs> but on that third day, early that morning, there was a rumble. Big old angel <laughs> came down and rolled a stone away. <laughs> he didn't roll that stone away for Jesus to get out. He's already out. <laughs> yes, sir. He opened that he rolled that stone away so his disciples could see that he's not there anymore. Hey, man, he has risen. Hey, man, hey, man, don't shed his blood. Right. Told Mary, hey, Mary, don't touch me right now. I haven't ascended to the Father. But at that moment of time, shh, to the throne of God in heaven, there in the mercy seat. Amen. He applied the blood to the mercy seat. Amen. And listen, when God sees you and me, he sees us through his son and the blood that is on. Whoa! Glory. Glory. Well, glory. Glory. Hallelujah. He sees us through that precious blood. The blood is the price of our justification. Whew. I'm going to slap out. You got five more points. <laughs> you say, are you going to preach them all? No, I can't. Amen. Now notice this. Faith is the channel of justification. Amen. Without faith, what does the Bible say? It's impossible to please God. He that cometh to God must believe he is God. And he is a rewarder to them that diligently seek him. Amen. Right. Hey Faith is the channel. Hey Amen. Did I not notice something? It's through growth. On the basis of grace, through faith in his precious blood and the work on Calvary, Amen. People get saved. 
Without faith, it, it, it's impossible. Without faith of believing what God has done, it is impossible to get saved because faith is the channel of justification. Amen. Uh, <clears throat> See, God has given every man a, a portion of faith. That faith has got to be sparked. Mm -hmm. That faith, when it's sparked, amen, and they're opened up to the truth of the Scriptures and the gospel of the Lord Jesus Christ, they respond, amen, and they come and acknowledge, amen, that they're lost in God. God does save them. Amen. They're justified by faith. For by grace are you saved through faith. Amen. And that not of yourself, it is the gift of God, not of works, lest any man shall boast. It's faith. Amen. Jesus is the author and the finisher of our faith. Amen. Listen, you are responsible. If you're here lost, you are responsible. You, you are responsible to exercise that faith that God gives you. Amen. Through this channel of faith, amen, you are saved. Amen. What does Romans 3.3 say again? For all is sin and come short of the glory of God. <laughs> Believing? Now, I don't know. I heard somebody say, you know, you know, I take my keys and by faith I know that car's going to crank when I go out there. I said, that might be good, brother, but what if it don't crank? <laughs> These vehicles today, I wouldn't guarantee that. But faith, when it comes right down to it, you're taking your life and you're putting it in to the Lord Jesus Christ. What is Philippians chapter 1, verse 20? Ah, I can't remember. Hey Amen. But the verse starts out like this. And you need to underline that when you find it. And being found in him. If you're not in him, you're not saved. Right. You know, say, well, I got the Lord. Oh, I got the Spirit. But what I want to know is how much of the Spirit of God, how much of the Lord do you have being found in him? Faith. Faith. Without it, it's impossible to please God. And I am more slap out. I'm, I'm saying this this morning. I am crucified with Christ. Amen. He said, but not I, but Christ who lives in me, Amen. who gave himself for me. And the life that I now live I live by the faith of the Son of God who gave himself for me. So, when a sinner, <laughs> when a sinner turns from his sin <laughs> and comes to God through Jesus Christ and pleads guilty, <laughs> God crucifies him with Jesus Christ. Right. Amen. And crucified, we're dead to self, the world, and the devil himself. Yeah. Amen. Dead to the world. If you're not dead to the world and you're living like the world, yeah. you better check up. Yep. You might not be saved. God puts enmity between him and this world. Yes, sir. There's enmity between this old, this old carnal mind. Amen. To be crucified with Christ and allow him, amen, to do the work in your heart and your life 
wherein by you can stand in this world regardless of what happens. You can stand justified before a three times holy God. What a blessing. What a blessing. What a blessing. Let me say, that's a blessing. Amen. To know that we're justified. Amen. In the eyes of God.